Hello friends, welcome to this video. Today I'm continuing my tribe gen series by creating an OC from the other tribe gen tribe that I made. This video, like the last one, was inspired by this comment. Again, I love it when you guys give me ideas, so feel free if you have more ideas for me to leave them in the comments. So if you recall, both tribe gen tribes that I made came with a story. And in last week's video, I made kind of the main character of the Scorchwing story. He leads a rebellion against this other tribe that's trying to take over the desert. So for this video, I'm making kind of the main character of the Tidewing story. So I figured I'd refresh the story as well as general facts about the Tidewings. All right, Tidewings are a tribe that lives on beaches. They're omnivorous, they have large bulky bodies with twisting horns, they have small vents that produce sparks on their tail tip and below their eyes, and they can shoot poisonous spines. Some members of this tribe can swim for long distances and force both dragons and animals to fall asleep with their touch, and they don't have any animuses. Now the overarching, like, story that I came up with for these guys is that they kind of have a highly stratified society. There are nobles that live up on the cliffs of the beach and then the peasants that live down in the sandy bottom. While the lower class isn't necessarily enslaved by the upper class, they're definitely, I would say, oppressed by the upper class. The lower class does the menial jobs, the hard work, they don't get to venture onto the cliffs unless they're servants in like royal households, basically. Not to mention that Tidewing law, <laughs> law being a very loosely applied term here, is essentially listen to the upper class, don't disobey them. If the lower class gets out of line, they're severely punished, upper class can do no wrong, all that jazz. And in the original Tribe Gen video, I was like, it would be really cool if a dragon, like, rose up against this classist structure to be like, you know what, we're all Tidewings, we should be equal. And essentially, there's a rebellion that ensues against the upper class. And it's great, as in it's great, you know, story fodder, essentially. <laughs> I'm sure it's not super fun to be in it, you know. Essentially, this character starts a revolution. So when thinking of a character that is going to start a revolution, I kind of automatically think of a character like Tsunami. Tsunami is loud and forceful, and I kind of even went the opposite route with my last character, so I'm trying to think of like, how do I make a character that is different from both this main canon character of Wings of Fire, and then also different from this character that I just made? And I think I found a good solution, but you can always let me know. All right, our character's name is Typhoon, and she was born a lower class dragon. Her parents were simple fishermen, fisher dragons, I don't know. And even though they didn't have much, she had a very peaceful, mainly lovely childhood. And she was just your normal, sweet, kind dragonette. She wasn't particularly like you know, vengeful, warmongering, or ambitious. She was just content to live her life. Unfortunately, this eventually changed. I, I mean, we all saw it coming, didn't we? All right, so one day, she's just minding her own business in the market, and these this group of dragonets like runs past her, like running from the police, basically. I mean, they're probably not called police. They're probably called like the Queen's Guard or something, but they're you know, running from the police. Well, they end up being caught really soon after they pass her. And it turns out they were running because they were stealing from market stalls, especially, you know, more high-class market stalls, like up the beach, more towards the cliffs. They sell ex more expensive things like jewelry and silks and all those kinds of things. Anyway, they were caught, which is great, right? except for the fact that they were upper-class dragonettes. And as they were running past Typhoon, they slipped some of their, you know, goods that they had stolen into her bag. So they point her out to the police, and they're like, no, she's part of our group. She was, it was her idea. And, you know, Typhoon can say all she want that she has no idea who these dragonettes are, but, I mean, it's the upper class, what is she supposed to do? Unfortunately, even though the Queen's Guard 
kind of know what's going on, there's not much they can do about it. Typhoon doesn't know that this happened. She probably just thinks the whole every single dragon in the upper class is corrupt, but the police did go to these dragonettes' parents and they explained and they were like, okay, so we obviously know that your dragonettes are lying, but unfortunately, the parents and relatives of these upper class dragonettes decided that it would just look bad if their dragonettes were punished for something like this, so they told the police to just arrest Typhoon and blame the whole thing on her. This is obviously the craziest, most unfair thing to ever happen to Typhoon in her whole life, but she tries to, to rise above it, you know? She tries to just go on, live her life, she serves her punishment, which, since she's so young, is basically just community service, but... Now, every dragon in the tribe either blames her because they think she did it or has to act like they blame her and sort of shun her a little bit because if, if they acted like these wealthy dragonettes did it, they'd get in trouble from the upper class. Basically, Typhoon's life is ruined. You would think now would be the time to like gather supporters, be like, you know, this is really unfair, maybe we should do something about this, but... Instead, she runs away. If everyone is going to think of her as a thief and a criminal, then, well, why even try, right? So, again, she runs. She takes a little bit of food, technically stealing for real for the first time in her life, ironically enough, and she flies out. She's probably six or seven years old when this happens, so, you know, maybe not the best planner yet. She's just a rash young dragon, so she basically heads out to sea, and it's not long before a storm catches her, and she's lost. The storm rages for days, it bats her around, she has no idea which way is up, which way is down, and eventually she washes up onto an island. An island full of pirates. So obviously, she becomes a pirate. Ever since I started drawing her with this, like, kind of snarl on her face, I have always seen her as this pirate captain. Dragons don't really have boats in the Wings of Fire universe. Like, I mean, yeah, overall they don't have boats, but I'm envisioning that dragons kind of, you know, group up to deliver goods across oceans. And basically like a little flock of dragons is like a boat. And then the pirate dragons are like in their own little flock and that's like their pirate ship. Anyway, Typhoon becomes a very successful pirate. I can just see her like diving down through the clouds with her, her, you know, underlings following her and knocking into the targets to throw them off balance, grabbing anything they drop. If anyone like really threatens her, she has just formidable natural weapons. She has poison darts on her body as well as lightning. I thought about giving her the other power of like sending dragons to sleep, but I don't think she needs them. And I'm kind of saving those for like the big bad of this story. So she starts out as this sweet, innocent, and trusting dragonette, gets betrayed by her own tribe and her superiors, you know, people who are supposed to be fair. She realizes, okay, the world isn't fair. I'm gonna make my own way. <laughs> she like gets this chip on her shoulders like, you know, no one's looking out for me, so I don't care what anyone else thinks. I'm gonna do my own thing, I'm gonna make my money, I'm gonna live my life the way I want to, and, you know, F everybody else. The betrayal of the justice system essentially made her pretty cold and, and harsh and kind of mean as a younger dragon, but the older she gets and the more she learns how to be a leader, she actually kind of opens up a little bit. She realizes, like, good leaders care about their dragons under their care, basically, or under their command, either way. So as she grows up, she really cares for the dragons under her. But to everybody else, probably she still seems a bit cold-hearted because her profession is literally stealing from and hurting other dragons, but basically in her own way, she's back to caring, kind, and compassionate. But of course, with this pirate edge, she's also in her time as a pirate grown braver, stronger, more cunning, strategic, you know, lots of things that would be good for, I don't know, a revolution perhaps? I don't think that Typhoon decides to go back by herself. 
I think somehow she gets a message from somebody in her tribe saying things have gotten worse, we're being worked to the bone now, we don't have rights anymore, the upper class is, you know, too much. Maybe like a letter from her parents or perhaps even another, you know, young dragon that's run away. I don't know, maybe you guys can help me decide. Letter or young dragon. I think young dragon could be cool because like, there's another character and then someone she can mentor. I don't know. Anyway, somehow she gets a message that the Tidewings need help. I think it's really hard for her to make the decision to go back and actually start the rebellion. In my mind, it's been many years since she left. She leaves as a six or seven year old and then by the time she gets this message, she's lived, you know, life for a while. In human years, I would say she's in her 40s, but eventually, obviously, because of the story that I already told, she goes back and she rallies the lower class around her and they fight. I'm imagining that this is more tough and violent than the Scorchwing conflict. Scorchwings mostly do guerrilla warfare and they don't have a lot of natural weapons, so they end up doing a lot of tricks and sneaking around like disrupting supply lines, but the Tidewings, I think it's a lot harder because both sides really know the area they're fighting in very well. The rebels hide in like the pirate islands and they, they're also sneaky, but the Tidewings have pretty strong weapons. Every dragon has these poison darts and lightning powers, and I don't think other Tidewings are immune to either attack, so it's pretty crazy. And as I kind of hinted before, the queen has these sleep powers. She can put anybody to sleep. I actually haven't thought of a good counter to the queen's sleep powers, basically. But, I mean, if the whole tribe rebels, the queen can't fight that. You know, at first I really wasn't sure about Typhoon because my initial instinct was honestly to just make her Tsunami, essentially. But I really ended up liking the idea of having like an older hero. She knows who she is, she knows what she wants, and she just has to face her demons. And I think it's fun having a character who's going to be like a strategist and not just rashly rushing into battle. You know, she's been a pirate captain for a while, she she knows what's up, and she's going to be a brilliant tactician, and it she just turned out really cool, and I really like her. The pirate queen basically and i mean who doesn't love a pirate queen yet again i find myself rambling as i do in every video it's essentially a tradition i'm just excited about pirates okay i t please let me know if you have any cool ideas you know i love to hear them and i love to do them so thank you very much for watching this video it's really cool to have like other people hear my silly little dragon ideas i don't know it's it's insane and i love it and thank you okay i hope this was enjoyable somehow though for you at all and uh, i'll see you around